The Sinagua. In Spanish? In Spanish, without water. There were farmers. Wet Beaver Creek has never gone dry. Archaeologists can prove that. Montezuma Well, if you haven't been there, go there. It's a sinkhole that's got a spring under it, puts out a million and a half gallons a day, and always has. I asked the docent there, even when the drought was going, yep, a million and a half gallons a day. So, a lot of water. So they have plenty of water. Why are they called Sinagua? Well, we named them that. 1583, what happened in the 1580s in the Southwest? Spanish. Spanish came. Spanish came. Coronado's in Mexico. Sends his guys up looking for the city of gold. We know one of their generals, one of their commanders was in Flagstaff. The archaeologists have his journal. He described Mount Humphrey. So anyway, he sends his guys up there looking for water. They didn't know it was a volcano. They're looking for springs, mountain springs. There aren't any on volcanoes. They came down, no water. So he says, we'll name this mountain Sierra Sinagua, mountain without water. Jump ahead to the 1940s and we established, uh, we, we discover rather these artifacts for these people. Guess where they found the first ones? Right near Mount Humphrey. So they're looking for a name, to name the culture. They have a name, Sinagua. They live in a Pueblo. They don't live here. When you came in our gate, if you went straight instead of turning into our gate, so if you turn right on the way out, if you want to see it, uh, just a quarter of a mile or so on your left, you see that little white limestone mesa. It's the only one there. You can't miss it. it. We called it Sacred Mountain. We don't know what they called it, but the Pueblo is there. Their ruins are there. Nothing's been restored. You only see foundations, you know, the walls about that high. You only see little foundations. If you want to go up there, you can. Uh, you, there's a hiking trail that goes up to the top. I'm obliged to tell you that there are rattlesnakes. As soon as he told us we could go up there, that was our next stop. Check out my video on Sacred Mountain. Basically at the Pueblo, they knew when uh, when it was the spring equinox, when it was the summer solstice, because they marked those days at their Pueblo. They've been farming for a long time. They knew those days. Somebody was down here one time, and they're observing shadows on this rock face. And they must have observed them for quite a while for somebody to figure out that just because we have these shadows, as in this picture, we have these two shadows, and they're moving this way and that way up the wall, up and down the wall, well, we're gonna make a calendar on this wall. This shadow came down like this. When the rock was there, March 21st. Shadow came down like that. That shadow came down like that. Making the sun shaft, like you see here, the sun shaft was right there. So they carved those concentric circles. Concentric circles are almost always sun symbols. So they'd be able to tell when they were here in the afternoon that it's the spring equinox. It's the first day of spring, all right? What do we do on the first day of spring when we're farmers? We get our fields ready to start planting. So that shadow came down right to that point. This shadow came down right to that point, as you see in the photograph. That made that much of that little staircase in the sun. They knew then it was time to plant their first corn crop. It takes 90 days to grow corn. You plant April, May, June, you harvest July, August, September. In May, May 21st, that much is in the sun. June 21st, that much is in the sun. As the sun goes higher in the sky in the summer, shadows become more vertical. As the sun gets lower in the sky in winter, shadow became more horizontal. In January, that rock makes a shadow up there. No farmers care about that shadow in January. The cool thing about it is now we've planted and now it's getting toward, toward the end of summer, getting toward fall. The shadows start moving back up the wall. So in September, that's in the sun again. The first month you plant, the last month you harvest. So each, each, each three months were indicated by that calendar. Very cool stuff.
scraped off. That stone has been pulled out four inches from the crevice that it's in. They put that rock on top of it to keep it from falling back into the crevice. The leading edge, you see, is ripply. They flaked that leading edge to make it look like that. When I say flaked, do you know what I mean? Anybody not? Flaked like when you make an arrowhead. Okay, they flaked off the, they flaked off the sandstone. To do that. Why did they go through all that trouble? Why did they go through all that trouble? Because, I mean, you'd have no way of knowing. That's a rhetorical question. In the afternoon, except today, that rock makes a shadow right there. The light part by my finger is the rock, and the black part to the side is the shadow. What do you think that shadow looks like? What's it look like? Looks like mountains. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Looks like mountains when you turn it that way. And then I have to ask, well, what mountains do you think it is? What mountain have I been talking about? So one of our docents went up and took pictures of all the mountain ranges around here. And when he got to Flagstaff, he found out he had the right one. So he superimposed the picture of the, of the mountain with lines going to the corresponding peaks. So when I say that we can't be sure what these things are and what they represent, because the last person who knew left here 1400 AD, I can't tell you if that's a coyote or a dog. I can't tell you if that's a deer or, a, or an elk. I can only tell you it's a four-footed animal, okay? We're pretty darn sure they went through a lot of trouble to make a representation of the sacred mountain that they can't see from down here because it's 50 miles north of here and, it, and we're...